What is good everybody? Welcome to an Epic My Damn Toys video. Today, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to be discussing night number two of the WWE draft, right? On Monday Night Raw, we had draft night number two. You guys know on Friday Night Smackdown, we had draft night number one. We did cover that full stuff. I let you guys know all of my thoughts and opinions on that draft, what I felt it should have, what should have happened, you know, what the results were. In every single video moving forward, I will now be shouting out one random commenter on my new videos. So if you guys would like a shout out in a future video, comment down below and leave me a like. Now, I have a lot of talking points because there are a lot of things that I want to talk about when referring to the WWE draft of 2020. So the first thing I want to talk about with this draft, guys, is I honestly do not know how to feel about both rosters. You know, you got Raw, you got SmackDown, where you don't have all the rosters represented. I may do a video where we have the updated rosters for Raw and SmackDown and just talk about everything in general again with the rosters. But you know that uh, the, the rosters are pretty much twice this size, right? I mean, we're missing our big-time champions. You have some mid-card champions here featured. You have your women's champions champion here and things. But for the most part, we are missing a majority of the rosters. But running it back, guys, when I run it back and I look at the rosters, I feel like there's a ton of heels on both sides and there's not a lot of baby faces. Like, when we refer to Monday Night Raw, the top baby faces are the WWE Champion Drew McIntyre, Ricochet was the next baby face taken, and then you have Matt Riddle, Jeff Hardy, and Keith Lee. That is it. There's not a lot, and it's kind of crazy how Keith Lee was drafted after Matt Riddle and Jeff Hardy. And I don't know why. I kind of feel like they're going to try and put Matt Riddle and Jeff Hardy together potentially in the tag team division. That's just kind of the vibe I got after they were attacked by Lars. You know, they did tag team. I don't know. That's just something to keep an eye on right there. I kind of feel like I'd be for that. Both guys have a great track record of tag team wrestling. Matt Riddle had a great tag team with Pete Dunne and they did fantastic. So I know that they would get along greatly. I think that would be really, really cool. But I kind of want to see Jeff Hardy compete for the top prize on Monday Night Raw. I even pitched the idea of him uh, possibly getting a shot at the Royal Rumble. Not looking that good now since Drew McIntyre is still champion, but we'll see about that. Another thing I wanted to discuss is over on SmackDown, I feel like SmackDown has all of my favorite guys, right? On Raw, you have The Fiend, you have Braun Strowman, you have Retribution, you have some things that I'm not the biggest fan of, you have Charlotte Flair. So like on SmackDown, we have my boy Seth Rollins, we got my boy KO, we got my man Dolph Ziggler, we got Sami Zayn over here, we got Daniel Bryan, we got Shinsuke Cesaro, Aleister Black, The Street Profits, Apollo Crews. I definitely do enjoy SmackDown's roster, but on the flip side, Monday Night Night Raw has a lot of big time names like Keith Lee, Randy Orton, Braun Strowman, Jeff Hardy, Matt Riddle, The Fiend, not including Drew McIntyre, AJ Styles, Ricochet. So Raw has a lot of heavy hitters too. So while I don't really know how I feel about roster, both rosters because I don't have them, you know, fully up next to each other, all the guys over here, all the guys over here, I feel like they're pretty decently balanced. I just don't feel like there's a lot of baby faces on either brand. I feel like they are heavily heel motivated, such as like on SmackDown, you have your terrible Trash Corbin, you have your terrible Lars Sullivan. Those are two guys that I just they just bore me. They put me to sleep. So those are some things I wanted to cover for sure. And another thing that I also thought about with this draft is you guys know how there's always, it's always three picks for Raw and then two picks for SmackDown. So Raw gets a pick, right? Then SmackDown, then Raw, then SmackDown, then Raw. Well, Raw gets the last pick in the, in the draft. So why in the hell would they get the first pick again? So it's basically like not only do they get three picks, but they get back to back top picks and the last pick of the draft. So it's like SmackDown gets shafted every time. If if there was logic involved in the draft, of course they're going to even out the teams as best. They're going to even out the rosters as best as possible because, you know, there's not anything going on. There's no guys like leading the draft. That's why I, I love general managers on both these brands because on Raw, you can have a GM and then SmackDown, you have a GM going back and forth trying to, you know, draft the best possible roster for, for ratings, for, for television, for all of that stuff. And, you know, if you had, it, it'd be kind of like the NFL or the NBA where, where the owners, the owners would be the GMs of these, of these rosters and they are trying to draft the best possible team to compete for championship, bring in money, bring in ratings, and overall run a successful business. So that I feel like that would help the draft tremendously to have somebody leading the front way like they used to back in the day. And they gotta fix these rules. I cannot stand how they had all the top names, how they like sprinkled out the names. Like, The Fiend is a pretty big time name. I'm pretty sure he would have been gone on draft night one, right? Randy Orton's another guy. Charlotte Flair's another guy. Charlotte Flair's another person. The Intercontinental champion was drafted super duper late, right? I don't think your Intercontinental Champion would be drafted that late. I don't think Randy Orton would be drafted that late. So, they need to put all of the talent in a pool, have a draft night one, where they have a legit draft. The It's evenly based, where you know you have your Raw, you, maybe Raw gets the first pick, and they can have three picks to two, because they are a three-hour show. But they gotta do a better job of doing the selecting process, not where they get back-to-back -back picks every time. And there's just a way better way to do it. There's definitely a better way that they could do this. And honestly, 
honestly, maybe at the end of the draft. Why not have it at the end of the draft where they can pick up more superstars? So maybe you could go Raw, SmackDown, Raw, SmackDown, Raw, SmackDown, back and forth like all night. And since there's only two teams in the draft, why are we doing rounds? I don't think you really need rounds. I say rounds, but I mean, in the first round, you'd have two picks. Second round, you'd have two picks. And it'd be two picks for every round. But you don't need, you don't need like eight rounds of each team picking three or four times. You see what I'm saying? It should just be back and forth, back and forth. And then at the end of the night, whatever's left of the draft pool, maybe at the end of the draft, maybe Raw can pick up like five to ten of the leftovers so that SmackDown doesn't get gypped out on any big time talent. I don't know. There's just a lot of ways they could tweak the draft and make it a lot more enjoyable. They can make it a lot more, or they can make it feel a lot better. They can make it, you know what I'm saying? There's just so many things they could do to make the thing feel better, to feel more lively. I, I saw a ton of people just wanting more out of this draft and it just seems the same every year. Nothing really means anything. People be swapping, like people are going to be swapping brands in a week anyways. It's just, I don't know man, just, there's so much, there's so much creativity and cool things they could have done with the draft and continually year after year they don't, they don't fully maximize the ability or the potential that they could with this draft. Now that's another thing that I wanted to bring up. Now uh, one more thing that I wanted to bring up at this draft, why in the hell would Monday Night Raw draft retribution? So yeah, let's take the team that's been beating the hell out of everyone, they've been destroying everything, they're their sole goal is to destroy your company from within. And yeah, we're just going to draft them. Bring them on over. They can just, they can burn my show to the ground. Yeah, that's fine. That's cool. Get get over here. Now, Mustafa Ali in this role is going to be great. At least I thought that was a great surprise. I thought that was well booked and everything like that. But I think that it's very imperative that they're going to have to make a lot of noise. Now, I'm not big on the full Retribution team. I think that, you know, it's kind of shallow right now. They haven't proven enough to me. But having Mustafa Ali as the leader is a great potential for him to lead them. I just hope that they stay in the limelight. They stay in a big time story realm and that uh, they live up to that hype and that they can still make some noise over on Raw. Because I feel like SmackDown probably would have been better for them. But I don't know. We'll have to see. I feel like they could have been in a large, you know, much bigger role over on SmackDown. But I don't know. I guess we'll have to see about that. But I just thought that was odd that you would draft them. You could have done a really cool storyline where they weren't drafted and then they, they go after both shows. You don't want to draft me, Brad? I'll destroy both your damn shows. We're coming into Survivor Series. How cool would it have been to have Retribution take over Survivor Series and say, no, bro, it's Raw versus SmackDown versus NXT versus Retribution, hobo. You know, the Retribution could invade all the shows. They can invade NXT. They can invade Raw. They can invade SmackDown and say, no, bro, we're competing at Survivor Series. You could have had a fatal four-way, Raw versus SmackDown versus NXT versus Retribution. And Retribution, you could really put them over as a top team, debating on, you know, how they look in those matches and how they compete. But I'm just fancy booking off the top of my head. That's just, These are just things that are coming into my skull while I'm talking here. But I thought that would be a really cool idea. They do, they go undrafted Mustafa Ali. You could show vignettes of him being like, okay, you don't want to draft us? That's okay. We've been ignored long enough. You want to ignore us? This is the whole problem with this company. Beat the hell out of everybody. Trash everybody. Could have done that. Totally. And I think one of the last things that I want to get in here, at least what I have in my notes, is that how trash was it that... Raw switched their tag team champions with SmackDown, right? So on Raw, we had the Street Profits, and then on SmackDown, we had the New Day with the SmackDown Tag Team Championships. You guys know that Big E stayed over on SmackDown. The New Day got drafted over to Raw, Xavier Woods and Kofi Kingston. A lot of people upset about this. I see it in the community. Uh, you know, it is it is crappy because I like them together a lot, but you know, I think there's a lot of potential there to do some really creative and cool things, but so we had Raw's Street Profits go over to SmackDown. SmackDown's New Day they're champions. They go over to Monday Night Raw. They have a backstage segment. Now, I missed this, or I would have probably pooped on it, but they just are in the backstage area, and they just trade tag titles, and I want to say it gives them an extra reign. So now, the New Day are adding a Raw Tag Team Championship reign to their reigns, and then the Street Profits get a SmackDown Tag Team Championship added to their reign. So they just switch titles here, and you want to talk about just straight up, just lazy booking right here? You could have done something, Brad. Like, you definitely could have done something. It didn't have to be some massive thing, but you could have just fantasy booking off the top of my head. You could have just had it where, I don't know, you could have a small tournament. You could vacate the championships. You could bring out new championships and say, we're vacating them, and uh, we're going to have a tournament. You could have relinquished both championships, maybe, and merged the tag team divisions because everybody knows that both of these tag team divisions are totally dry as hell, man. They're like the Sahara Desert out here. So you could have just merged both tag team divisions, brought out brand new tag team 
booking championships to go across both brands. That would solve the New Day split up. I guess unless you're really booking a storyline with the New Day split up, that would have been something that you really could have done. But it looks like uh, we're just going to keep rolling with what we got. I think that a lot of people would embrace a, you know, one tag team division. Monday Night Raw could feature the tag team champions. Friday Night SmackDown could feature the tag team champions. You could do some really cool and creative things. Oh, God in heaven, that would have been bad. Thou stood up. Thick boys, thick boys. So, yes, I think you could have gotten rid of both tag title designs. I think both of these tag title designs have run their course. I'm sick of seeing the Spartan heads. You could have got rid of both championships. Again, just fantasy booking off the top of my skull. I haven't put a ton of thought into it. You could have had a really big tag team tournament to crown your first ever world tag team champions in WWE. Brand new tag titles. Have them go back and forth between Raw and SmackDown. It solves the New Day split up issue. Again, unless you're trying to do something really creative and book their breakup accordingly, or maybe you could pull the trigger late and say, now we're disbanding the tag teams, and now we're disbanding the tag team championships, and then New Day's like, Big E, we're back together, and Big E's like, nah, bro, I've already moved on from y'all, and that could be the start of a great feud right there. I don't know, I'm just laying groundwork, but that was something I did not like. I did not like how they just handed over the tag titles, thought that was pretty lazy, thought you could have done something better than that, regardless of what it was, you could have done something creative, but I don't know, I think these are all of my thoughts, I, I tried my best to get everything together. Overall, looking at these, I hate that Trash Corbin and Lars Sullivan are on the same brand, that makes me sick, but then again, you want to split up Braun Strowman and Lars Sullivan, you don't want those guys on the same brand, even though that probably would make for a cool feud, I kind of I kinda, I kinda like to see it, sort of, but it would probably get old, you know, both big guys running around, I don't know, but this should be interesting, man, this should totally be interested, I am interested to see, you know, how what goes forward, I'm happy to see KO over on SmackDown, he can compete at the top level over there, it does seem like he's one of the top baby faces, which is very interesting, I'd like to see him as a heel again, but you got a ton of heels over there right now, so it does look like he's going to remain babyface probably, especially with Roman Reigns going on and everything, but I think that is going to do it for today's video, guys. I hope you guys did enjoy the review of this draft night too. Let me know what you think of everything down in the comment section below. I'd really appreciate it. I want to give a huge shout out to Sean Feehan for his comment on my last video. I thought it was also weird that the Macho Man did not include interchangeable hands, but the Andre had them. Very weird. Am I high on particles, Brad? Probably so, Brad. I think I'm high on particles too. Sweet, nasty ones at that. But thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to comment down below and leave me a like for a possible shout out in tomorrow's video. Thank you guys for watching. Subscribe to the channel and I will see you guys in the next video. Thank you.